Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. So I don't have like a prepared message today. This is not really a message. It's just an update. And I just wanted to say a few things on how things are going. And I appreciate the few subscribers that uh, have subscribed recently. You know, I, I don't, I notice that stuff. And you know, I, even if I just have one subscriber out there, you know, I'm going to get you the information that you need. And, you know, lately I've been really uh, going into the wilderness and really studying my Bible and getting really close to the Lord. And he's and he's taught me a lot. And I, I want to share that with you guys. Um, but today, you know, I just wanted to point out a few quick things that I've learned recently. Share those. Um, nothing prepared. Just coming right off the top of the dome. Just wanted to say uh, what's up to you guys. And anyway... I'm going to read from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, uh, from chapter 21, verses 4 through, I don't know, we'll, we'll go until I feel like we're done. All right, so anyway, um, and they journeyed, the Israelites, he's talking about the Israel, and they journeyed from um, Mount Horbi by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. So the Israelites are traveling through the desert now, uh, away from Egypt. God's leading them out of the bondage of Egypt um, to the promised land, and the Israelites are getting discouraged. Uh, verse 5, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he taketh away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set, it, and set, up, set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten... When he looketh upon it shall live. When Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a, ser if, a, if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Word of the Lord. Say, what does this have to do with anything, Sean? Uh, um, I just wanted to make a point here uh, that that the Lord actually sent fiery serpents to Israel when they misbehaved, when they didn't trust God. And and they were bitten. And and some of them even died. Okay? So, God is not above punishment. Okay? Now, I don't want to get too wrapped up into details, but from my past relationship, I noticed that anytime I try to discipline my woman, and, and that's a thing nowadays. Nowadays in our society, um, Men disciplining their children or disciplining their women um, is looked like as a big no-no. In fact, it's illegal. If you so much as raise your hand towards a woman, that's no, that's that's considered illegal uh, grounds for divorce, you know. But here we see in the Bible, you know, God sometimes He had to uh, really lay down the wrath on His people. Not that He hated them. But he loved them, and he was trying to correct their behavior. And, you know, sometimes us as men, you know, we need to stand up to our women and, and, and put them in line. And, and, and one of the things God has given us is physical strength to, um, to discipline them. And, and, and you know, there, there comes a line when, when, it, and when, when you can cross it and go too far. Um, but like I said, I am prepared to message, so I don't want to waste your time here. But basically, I wanted to point out that here... You know, God sent uh, serpents to um, stricken Israel to get them back in line, right? Because they were going through the desert, things were uncomfortable, but God was like, you know what, just relax, chill, stick with me, follow my commandments, obey me, and I'm going to get you where you need to be. Now, where I'm going with this is, um, you know, because I had, a, I, you know, I had and I am having, you know, a, a rough time getting over this person that I loved, you know? This woman that I love. And, you know, I, I, I'm not too proud to admit it, right? Like, I love this person. I still love this person. I will pr always love this person. But, you know, this person has rejected me. This, you know, this person has uh, 
uh, rejected my discipline. This person has rejected my guidance, my direction, um, my love. Um, and, and in the same way, I'm kind of re relating that to, to the Israelites and God, you know. Um, at first they trusted me, you know, at first the Israelites trusted God and as they start going through the desert, things start getting tough and God's like, you know what, just relax, just chill, just stick with me, you know, and the people, no, 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 we're going to turn away from you, we're going to curse you, um, and God said, you know what, I'm bringing serpents upon you and, you know, I, I was kind of like thinking, you know, because yeah, you know, I'm MGTOW, but at the same time, you know, I don't hate women. You know, it's not like I'm trying to reject all women and close the door because there are such things as a godly woman, a virtuous woman. Now, granted, we do live in a society filled with a bunch of whores and and, and women who are the complete opposite. Uh, they're complete unmarriage material. You know, they don't even want marriage. Um, they reject the teachings of the Bible. They reject God. Um, and they will be judged. But my point is, I haven't completely shut the door on virtuous women. You know, if there, if I were to meet a virtuous woman, woman, who is out there who wants to submit to to the Father, um, I, you know, I, I would I would not object to that. You know, I know there's the, there's dangers of the marriage laws and there's dangers of um, things like child support and alimony, all that whole stuff, right? I'm, this is not the point of this video. The point is. How do you, for those guys of you who are out there, maybe like me, maybe you, you loved a girl and she rejected you and, you and it's hard for you to move on, okay? Let me tell you something. God actually had to turn away from his first love, from Israel, you know? And, 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 and we see in the New Testament, and I want to read from you a, a few short passages, you know, I'm going to pick one from Romans, you know, I have a couple picked out for you um, to illustrate my point here. Uh, so let me open my Bible to Romans. Sorry, I'm unprepared. Uh, I apologize. Usually, you guys know I'm very more meticulous with my preparations, but, you know, I just wanted to shoot this out there today. So I'm going to read from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 22 through 30, which says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction you know i, I could relate to this you know i i have long suffered for this woman who i'm who i'm loved continuously reached out to her continuously offered um her my love and forgiveness and what that and it's like at what point do you just let your wrath that's been kindled just um destroy it all to the ground right anyway <laughs> Maybe I said that wrong. Anyway, verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As, as he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be uh, called the children of the living God. Esaias also cried concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant that shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Esaias said before, Except the Lord of the Sabbath... Uh, I'm going to say Sabbath, had left us a seed, we had been uh, as Sodom, and been like that unto Gomorrah. Okay, say, so what does this mean, Sean? Okay, this probably means a lot of stuff, and I didn't do my homework. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I haven't really researched this. Maybe a sermon's coming out on this, but right now I'm freeballing it, and I'm telling you, you know, God wanted Israel first. He wanted his people out of Egypt. That's what he wanted. But those people rejected him. So he opened up his doors to uh, alternatives. He said, you know what? I'm going to open the doors to the Gentiles. And in fact, the Gentiles are, are going to be the ones, the new ones to inherit um, my promise. Uh, not to say that he completely closed the door on Israel. And I don't want to get this into a whole uh, um, Israel's uh, Jews versus Gentiles debate or topic. But my point is this. If you've loved a woman in the past, she's rejected you. It's okay to just be like God and open your doors 
to the Gentiles, to other women. Okay? Don't, don't think, yeah, this is the end-all, be-all. Okay? Now, this is just some thoughts running through my head today. Um, maybe you guys have some similar uh, things um, going on in your life. Maybe you can relate to this message. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. You know, just a few things. Uh, just a quick recap. Um, you know, God tried to discipline his first love, Israel, when they disrespected him. And, and, they, and they rejected him. So God um, opened his doors to the Gentiles. Um, so how does this relate to modern relationships? Well, if you've had a first love um, and they rejected you, you know, it's okay to open up your doors to the Gentiles, you know, to open up your doors to other women, you know, because there's, there's probably a virtuous woman out there who will love you, who will treat you right the way you should be treated. And as much as you love your first love, you know, you're going to love uh, the Gentile, the new woman, just as much, if not more. Because she will actually care. She will actually return the love. Okay, she's not just going to take, take and take from you without giving anything back. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that message reached somebody. Anyway, I'm going to close with a uh, reading from the book of um, Acts, chapter 15, verse 7. Give God the last word. And it's good to see you guys. Thank you for my new subscribers. And I got new sermons coming out. Um, oh, shoot. Uh, I got new sermons coming out. I'm just, I have so much wisdom that the Lord has bestowed upon me. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm gearing up. I'm gearing up to share it because I have a lot to share. I have a lot to share. And I love you guys. I'll, I'll keep praying for you guys. And please pray for me. Um, cause, uh, it's a clown world out there we're living in. And, uh, we need to strengthen each other so we can uh, at least strengthen each other through prayer. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you later. Um, Acts 15 verse 7 says, And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a, how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Amen. God bless.